All right. Now we're into Daniel. All right, we're going to just go ahead and start reading Daniel. We're going to read the whole chapter, Daniel chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And listen, I got to tell you, tonight's going to be kind of like a history lesson, but it's important, so it's best you can. And I'm going to try to start getting Danielle, Danielle, don't forget, to on our website. Do you know the website? When Next time we have church on a Wednesday night, I'll be able to tell you that, how to get to the website. That, like, you know, because we have a website, and she can download the notes. And I just think it would be a good thing, and you can print them off of the website. And tonight the notes are like this, but it's kind of like in an outline form. But my point is, is this, is that if you had the notes and you wanted to ever go back, that way I don't have to spend, I used to do this, I spend my own money printing up notes, and then nobody reading the notes. But if you wanted to read the notes, you would have access to it, and you'd be able to print it up on your own printer, and you'd be able to read it at your leisure to be able to help yourself remember because I got to tell you something as much as I want to say that you're going to remember you're going to even retain enough information from these teachings to really be able to put all the little dots together that when we get to the end you're going to be able to get some because I even heard Robert say something earlier at Pete Roof when I was over there and he said something about militarily and he was talking about the forces of evil and we've already talked and I mean I'm not saying that he didn't already know that but I mentioned that uh, here recently whenever I was talking about territorial spirits and I was talking about fallen angels and all of that stuff comes together in a big old pile so where you can see what we're really dealing with when we get to the end all right okay so let's go ahead and start reading and in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams so they came and stood before the king and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. In other words, I guess it's saying, he's saying, I don't really remember. Now, isn't that true? You have a dream sometimes, you don't remember the whole thing. He said, but this is what he says, but if you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dunghill. It's another way to say your houses shall be laid desolate. One of the translations says you're going to be torn limb from limb. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm over here reading away and the, uh, the brother back there remembered to do his part. I forgot to do my part. I'm going to read and nobody wants to say nothing. Yeah, it's going to take a second. All right, let's see here if we can get it in there. Not happening yet. Oh, here we go. There we go. All right. Sorry, guys. Y'all can say something. Sorry, all you out there in video land. We just had a technical difficulty. All the pastors. All right, here we go. Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. Y'all ready? All right. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers, the sorcerers, the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. My spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dung hill or made desolate. If you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered and again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time. In other words, you're buying time. You're trying to buy time here. Because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. you for you have prepared lying and corrupt. He didn't even trust his own soothsayers or whatever. You have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. What that means in King James is till a new king shows up. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to stall till, till somebody else takes my place and you get away with all this. <laughs> he says, therefore, 
Tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. Real quick though, I want to just make the point. You see how serious he is about this? It says that his sleep evaded him. It, it, he was very troubled. Whatever this dream was, listen, I had a dream before my sister died. I don't mean to get into this too deep, but I'm telling you right now, when I woke up, it was a week before my sister died. She died a week later and I was so troubled. Like, listen, when God gives you a dream for whatever the purpose is, and he's trying to rattle your cage for a reason, I'm telling you right now, I could feel the demonic presence in my room. And listen, he was trying to get my attention. The Lord was trying to get my attention. And I believe, I don't know, and you know what, this, this is a dream about the end of the days. This is a dream about what's going to happen to the human race. And so I just want you to know that that's what's going on here. This is a big deal, right? The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing at any magician or astrologer of Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requires. And there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods Whose dwelling is not with flesh. That's a lie. You should have known Daniel a little bit better. And he could have told you something different. There is a God whose dwelling is amongst man. For this cause the king was angry and very furious. And commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. You remember that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We'll read about them next week. That they would desire mercies of the king, God of heaven. Isn't it time to pray when something like this is going down? It's time to pray, my friend. Concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might. And has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in to Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Remember last week, Daniel wouldn't eat the meat, wouldn't drink the, wouldn't drink the wine from the king, took his stand, and the Lord gave him gifts. Amen. Now these gifts are coming in handy. And, and that, that will make known the king of the interpretation. The king answered said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto the dream, unto me the dream which I have seen in the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise... Look, he's being kind of like, not facetious, but he's like, Wait, hold on a second, king. I mean, it seems like, I don't know how sassy he was, but <laughs> cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show it to the king? But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. You see that right there? That's what this is all about right there, in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into your mind upon your bed, what should come to pass hereafter. And he that reveals secrets makes known to you what shall come to pass. But y'all think I use a lot of words. Look at this, man. Come on, he done repeated himself three times. That's because he's trying to get it across to us, right? But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw and behold a great image. 
This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and the form thereof was terrible. It was a big, it was a mighty, it was a powerful thing. It caused, it made, that's what the definition in the Hebrew, to make afraid, dreadful. It was a terrible thing. It caused a lot of anxiety and fear. He was stricken with it. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. So let's just pay look close attention to that. A stone was cut out without hands, and it smote the image upon its feet, and the feet that were made of iron and clay, and it broke them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away. You know, I've talked about threshing floors before. They'd grind up the wheat and then the winnowing fan. They'd stick the, stick the fan or those kind of like a pitchfork underneath the grain, throw it up in the air. The wind blows the chaff. The air is now filled with chaff. The grain falls back down because it's heavier. This image that was taking place, this stone broke it and crushed this image to the point like it was like dust and it's just flying in the wind now, all right? And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, are a king of kings for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven has he given into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. He's telling Nebuchadnezzar, you're the head of gold. And after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things, and as iron that breaks all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou saw the iron was mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of the iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. Then the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors, which is like fragrances and incenses, incense unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing you could reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. And so just remember, because next week, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have also been given power. So here we have a, we have a, we have a, a, a picture. We have a picture of uh, an image, okay? Now, I don't really usually like, I found this on the internet, I don't really usually like using things that try to interpret things for me, but I've been studying this so many times and, and really from a lot of different respected people and people that I respect greatly, and, and I've gotta be honest with you, pretty much everybody is all in agreement on what this image represents. There might be time frames that might show up different later on about various things, and we'll get into that more when we get to the book of Revelation. But 
And, and listen, the book of Daniel is going to interpret some of this for us as we move forward. Because the same vision that takes place with this image will also come forth in different kinds of beasts. Whether it's a bear, a leopard, you know, or, and, then, and then there will be other types of visions. At least three different visions within the book of Daniel, including this one. And that sooner or later, it's going to start telling us that one of these we, already told, we were already told of who the head is, that's Babylon, but then we will also be told who, the, um, who the, the breast or the chest and the arms are later on. He's going to point blank tell us, and then we're also going to be told who the, uh, the loins and the legs are, which is Greece, and then we can extrapolate from that and work backwards and figure out that Rome was the legs of iron. Okay. So I wanted, I just wanted you to see this. So we're going to start and I'm just going to kind of blow it up a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of focus right now. And we're going to start with Babylon. So I don't know how well you can see it. It says Babylon right there, but it, but it, but it's the head. All right. I want, and I want you to, I want you to know, I want to talk a little bit about historically. I just want to introduce you to some thoughts and uh, some of these thoughts are going to be very important as we move forward, but we will be repetitive. And when we get to the places, we'll kind of break down some of this a little bit more into detail. Okay. Oh, I thought I, I, it didn't really blow up for me. But uh, anyway, so you remember last uh, couple of weeks ago, whenever I preached on the spirit of Jezebel, you remember when I talked about that and, and I mentioned, I, and I started it off with this harlot. Uh, in, Re in, in Proverbs chapter 7, I believe it was, right? And you'll remember, it was, but it was typologically that it wasn't just an adulterous woman. Yes, physically it's the same kind of thing. She's trying to steal the heart of the man. But spiritually speaking, that she's trying to steal God's people away. And there's a, there's a contradistinction all throughout, well, throughout Scripture of the harlot versus the bride. OK, because the word of God teaches us in the New Testament that the bride of Christ is you and I. That's another way to say the church, the body, the bride. Amen. Because the groom is Jesus and he's coming back for his bride. But the harlot's trying to mess up the um, the wedding, if you will, the marriage supper of the lamb. That's actually in the Bible. So there's much in the concept of marriage throughout the scriptures and the idea of God being married to his people. And so we see that. But one of the things I want you to know is, is that this head right here is the beginning. Okay. And, and, and it's the beginning of the, this. It's one image, but it's made of many parts. I want you to see that because what I want you to know, what I titled this tonight is Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the beast system. I want to say that again to you. Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the beast system. Whenever we get all the way into the book of Revelation, it's going to all start unfolding. But what I need you to know right now is that God gave Daniel a dream somewhere around 450, 500 BC, somewhere around there. And he was showing him what was going to happen in the latter days. And it started to happen during the time frame of Daniel. Now, Daniel ends up getting, doing, uh, having visions and prophesying about things as we move forward we're going to get even deeper into prophecies and and it's going to start becoming unveiled even in daniel 9 and different things like that daniel 7 we're going to start to see more clearly now listen daniel prophesied with such clarity on some of these things that liberal scholars okay you know what a liberal scholar is Okay, you ever flip through the channels you got on the History Channel, somebody's talking about the Bible? Did you ever do that before? If you did, don't ever do it again. Okay, <laughs> change the channel. And the reason I'm saying that, you watch what you want, I'm just being silly. But there, a liberal scholar is somebody that's gotten a degree, a PhD in biblical languages, but they don't believe in the inspiration of Scripture. Now, there's PhDs out there that, that have, there's one guy that I watch sometime on YouTube, Yvette told me about him, dude, he's so smart, it's unbelievable. Michael Heiser, he's got a PhD. PhD in Semitic languages. I mean, dude, these people are smart, my friend. Okay, but he's a he's a PhD that believes in the inspiration of the scripture. He believes that the Bible is the word of God. Okay. 
the people that you see on the History Channel, they don't even believe the Bible is the Word of God. Every time they turn a corner, they're trying to refute the, validity, refute the validity of the Scripture. Liberal scholars say about the book of Daniel, there ain't no way Daniel could have prophesied all that like that. That was added in second century, uh, in the 2nd century A.D. during the church or during the, you know, the intertestamental period. That was added later on after all this stuff happened. But you know what's crazy, just like the Lord is? In the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found scrolls that had portions of all of this information that predates the time frame when they were trying to say it. So the Lord knows how to say, just be quiet, just sit down because, because you don't know everything you think you know. Because your, your wisdom is making you foolish. Just sit down and be quiet. But they're not going to do a redact, uh, what do you call it, a redaction? They're not going to redact that. They're not going to come back and say, oh, we're sorry. No, 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 because they're trying to confuse us. All right, so I want you to know that as we move forward, such clarity. But what I want you to see so far is that this head of gold. Now, you remember, we also talked about how where Babylon started. You remember that? So this would be the Neo or New Babylonian Empire. The first Babylon started what? At the Tower of Babel, right? You remember we talked about that. Nimrod. Nimrod in in the first corporate rebellion against God, but out of Nimrod, if you do any kind of research, that's where astrology comes from. This is where we learn about the concept of, and in the book of Revelation, and I'm about to get to it in a second, in the book of Revelation, it's called Mystery Babylon. So it starts way in Genesis 11, but look, I'm not making something up. Revelation 17 and 18 is calling it Mystery Babylon. This is the head of it. Now, I wish I was this cool. And I wish I was this smart. But Sunday I preached a message, the head controls the body, right? I got to be truthful when I tell you that I did not think it through. But this is a perfect, this is the alternate. This is the counterfeit. See, the head, the mystery religions is moving from the top wise and moving into the body, if you will. All those believers in Illuminati, occult magic through the years, mystery religions. Dude, if I could tell you all the stuff that I've learned through the years and people would say, dude, you're wasting your brain space. But I'm telling you, no, the Lord has allowed me. Ancient Babylonian mystery religions, Canaanite religion, Roman religion, myth Greek mythology, the, the South American serpent gods uh, moving into the, you know, the bringing it, that Jewish mysticism that I talked about on that Thursday night and uh, moving into, turns into Kabbalah, moving into the Knights Templar. Oh, dude, if we have time to even talk about that, moving, all this is mystery religion. It's under the scene. They're painting themselves up to be one thing, but they're actually teaching occult magic along the way because the enemy is here and he's hiding himself in a mystery. And he, I've already told you this beast is galloping through the annals of human history and he's affecting people just like God has the church and through his Holy Spirit moves through the church to allow his plan to go forward. The beast has a head and this is his religion and it's a religion of deception and it's a religion of magical spells and whatever, however they do their stupid magic. And it does, it affects the world. We don't want to think that way. We don't want to give credit to the devil. We don't want it. But no, I'm here to tell you, the book of Revelation gives credit to it because I'm about to turn to it. And it says the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the fornication of her wine. The world and the inhabitants of the world are drunken with it. And I'm here to tell you, I had a conversation with somebody else. The church has become drunk with it because we've invited the world into the church. Rick Warren's peace plan, Chrislam, mixed Christianity with Islam. And we can all cohabit and coexist together and, and, and you know no that's called the ecumenicalism that's called a one world religion god's not okay with that my friend now you're not supposed to listen don't don't edit me and put a little blurb out there you're not supposed to hate muslim people you're not supposed to hate buddhist people you're not supposed to hate anybody but, but God's either real or he's not. And he's either the one that said Jesus or he isn't. And, he's, and, Je and if that's the case, then Jesus is the only one that could die for the sin of mankind. And that means that if the Bible's right, that the Bible also says that there's a lying devil. And he's the author behind mystery religion, the head that's been causing deception. And along the way, just...
just as God has had his own people, Israel, that has turned into the church. And now we've been in 2,000 years of church history. And the Holy Spirit is, is moving through the head, which is Christ, into the body and accomplishing things. So it is with the occultic world. He's always counterfeiting everything. And I just quit with mystery religion whenever I got to the Knights Templar. There's so much more than that. Rosicrucianism, which is the Rosy Cross. Going in, masonry's been around from the get-go, dude. They connect themselves all the way back to Babel. Dude, all of this stuff, I could go on and on and on and, like, don't even really want to do it, but I'm just trying to make a point. I'm trying to get you to help you to see a picture here. I want you to understand that this is a, this image is all, it's one, it's a B system, but it's made up of different parts, okay? And he's trying to give us some understanding. So Babel is the beginnings of Mystery Babylon, working on large people groups, controlling nations. Remember the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Grecia. You remember how I brought that up? Fallen angels over nations. That's just two examples, but I believe that it's all over the world. When I said territorial spirits, I wasn't trying to get y'all caught up in the man of Gadarene or Mount Hermon or all. I'm just trying to make a point that, the, that like Robert said earlier, militarily, the enemy has power it's kind of like generals and colonels and captains and grunts okay <laughs> at different levels spiritually <clears throat> speaking to territorially control this try to control this world but yet look the beauty of it is is that god sends the real king born in a manger amongst stinky animals and then whenever it's time for him to die on the cross he shows up into jerusalem riding on a donkey instead of a white stallion and what ends up happening is is that he gains victory through the the most unexpected of ways. How is he going to gain victory? That a king would die naked on a cross for his people? What kind of king dies for his people? No, kings are selfish. Kings are rich. Kings wear silken clothes. Kings make their people die for them. And, and, and yet, through this, we're told, and I mean, I've experienced some victories. I know you've experienced some victories. Surely you have. Do, do, you know, I mean, if you're born again, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not born again, you need to say, Jesus, please come into my heart. You need to start getting real with the Lord. But if you're born again, you know what I'm talking about. Because God witnessed to you that his Holy Spirit came to live in you. If God's never witnessed that, now the devil's going to try to lie to you. He's going to try to convince you you never were born again. Right? But if, but if you were born again, you know what I'm talking about. Sister Tut used to say, you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. Because when the Holy Ghost shows up and makes your heart his home, you know that you know that you know. And if you don't know, you can't know. Amen? All you got to do is invite him in. Lord, I want you. Lord, I want you. And when it happens, you're going to know it. Right? When this lines up with this, right. boom, you're going to know it, my friend, because you're going to know that you know. Amen? Amen? So, Mystery Babylon started in Babel. All these mystery religions, astrology, all this stuff, dude. There's extra biblical information that talks about Nimrod. He's in all kind of extra, all kind of other cultural writings. This whole story lives on. All this astrological, magical, occultic, you get it, right? So let's take a look real quick at Mystery Babylon. Um, let's see here, Revelation of... Uh, Take a look at Revelation chapter 17. So, so again, the main point I'm trying to make with this, and listen, we're going to probably take a look at this lady a few times, okay, until we get to where we really try to dissect her and break her down. We're talking about Babylon, and what I was trying to tell you is it started at Babylon, and then I'm telling you, Revelation, it, we, we see her, her, her again. We're calling her her because she's like the spirit of Jezebel. She's like that Proverbs 7 woman. And, and, you know, listen, I'm not trying to get weird on you, but did you know that the devil's a pervert? Can I just say that? He's a pervert. <laughs> Look, if you knew anything about this, this, there's an image called Baphomet. I'm not telling you to go Google that. But Baphomet is like this goat head thing that the Knights Templar originally were worshiping. And Baphomet sits there and he's got all these weird tattoos on him and he does some kind of weird yoga pose. And he's got his horns and he's got like you can tell he's got male like he got a cry. I mean they don't show they don't always show like his male part, but you know that he's male in the way that he's built. And then all of a sudden he got boobies. I, I'm just saying, like, dude. So Lucifer can be Lucifer, Lucifera. It's a spirit. It's a it's the the whore of Babylon. It, 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 it he he don't care. He's well, he's transgender, is what he is. Yeah. 
Okay, and he'll go, he'll go both ways. He likes going both ways. He'll go one way if that works. This is the point. It, it just is what it is. Okay, and that's what we, that's what we're seeing. This has been going on. This ain't nothing new. Okay, it's just more out in the open. All right, and I didn't make that up. Other people made that up. I didn't paint that picture. Somebody else painted that picture many, 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 many years ago, and it's already in existence. So there you go. I didn't do it. Somebody else did. So blame them. Put them in jail if you're going to start putting preaching. Okay? All right. So here we go. Revelation 17. This is Mystery Babylon. This is the head that controls the body. In the end, though, she's going to get hers. Amen? And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Many waters describes people groups. The land masses come out the water. And you got all these peoples, okay? She sits upon all of these waters. Basically, it's describing she's over the, she controls the earth. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. I need you to be able to see this. The Bible talks about people being drunk. The Bible talks about people being sober. When it talks about that in the New Testament, then it's describing sobriety in the sense of spirituality. Can you see what's going on? And whenever people are drunk, they can't see right. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. I don't have time to break this down, but listen, we're going to run into ten horns when we get to Daniel. The ten toes in this image is connected to the ten horns. Right now, we're only going to have like four heads, but i got to be honest with you, before it's all said and done, there's seven heads. Two of them existed, and I'm not going to wear you down with too much information right now, but two of them existed before <coughs> Daniel interpreted the dream, and a couple of them come back into existence at the end. So you end up with six, and then there's a seventh later on, and this, from the seventh comes the eighth, and we're going to break all that down when we get to it. From the seventh comes the eighth, and the eighth is the Antichrist kingdom. All right? And so it says, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now listen, I went, today I was, I was talking to somebody else, and he said, do you, do you think that this Antichrist situation or that this beast, however it was worded, is going to be political or religious? Both. It's going to be both. Now, what the, what, I know what the person was, was saying. He was saying, but how do you unite people under religion when everybody has differing opinions of religion? That's going to kind of be easy because right now the Pope, just like Rick Warren, is saying, let us all be understanding of one another. The only people that are really left on the outside is people like you and me. That really believe Jesus is the only answer and that people don't receive him will be, will, will be judged because they're still carrying their own sin. It's not because God's mean. No, it's because their sin was never dealt with. Because, the, because God had a plan. Newsflash, humanity doesn't get to change the plan of God. Newsflash, just because humanity is hard-hearted and stubborn and he wants to go his own way, and just because there's a real devil that can use other people to deceive other people, God's not changing his plan. His plan was to ultimately create a nation called Israel through Abraham, Give the world Jesus. Jesus dies on the cross and the world accepts him. The truth of the gospel is preached. People reject it because they don't, I don't like that story. I'm going to pick this story. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like that bloody Jesus hanging on, nagging on a cross because it just makes me feel really uncomfortable. And it reminds me of all the things in my life. And instead, I, I want to choose this religion over here because this religion over here. Look, man, these people are really sweet in the airport. They'll hand you flowers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And, you know, you get my point. I'm being facetious, but you get the point I'm trying to make. It's like they want to be comfortable. People want to pick what works for them. It's nice and soft <clears throat> and cuddly. Yep. You know, I wish I had time to really talk, but I don't. You know, well, uh, one time I was, I was, I was talking about the presence of the Lord with this girl that was a, was a Buddhist. And I told her about how one time, one time I was at TBI, which is where Josh and Chris went to Bible college. Any day. And I was up early in the morning. I was praying out in the woods. They had like this little wooded area by the hills. And I was out there and all of a sudden here comes this little doe. 
or or I don't know some kind of thing, right? It didn't have it didn't have a ride. Jumps over this fence and just takes off, dude. I mean, I'm the only one out there. I'm praying, dude. I'm praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden, here comes this this it looked like a gazelle flying through. I'm like, wow, Lord, that was awesome, you know. Thank you, Jesus. You know? So I'm talking to this Buddhist and I'm explaining to her this. She's like, that's what we're doing right now. You are one with the deer, and you and I are one with one another. <laughs> Like, I feel something. I said, sister, I don't know what you're feeling, but we ain't, we ain't talking about the same God. No, we're not one with one another, and I ain't one with the deer. I'm one with the Lord, you know? But she wanted it to be all nice and warm and fuzzy like that, but it's not right. Yeah, it can be warm and fuzzy, and we're all together because we're one body, but it's because we're in Christ. Amen. It, God's not okay with sharing his glory with another. That's what he said, have no other gods before me. He's not okay with sharing his glory. But we're getting all confused in the modern church. All right. So here's this woman. And I want you to notice some things. I'm not trying to say this woman's the Catholic church. I don't believe she is. Because you know what this woman is? She's the mother of harlots. See there? She gives birth to harlotry. So that means she's the mother of Canaanite religion, Egyptian mystery religion, Babylonian religion, the Tower of Babel religion. She's the mother of the serpent religion in with the Mayans and the Aztecs or whatever. She's the mother. She gave birth to Rosicrucianism. She gave birth to the Knights Templar version. She gave birth to Kabbalah. She's just giving birth. She's just spitting babies out anywhere that she can to pop up all kind of confusing stuff to like just get everybody to worship anything other than the right way and to go the right way but she did give birth to Catholicism sorry just is what it is whenever listen all you got to do is just do it don't get hey don't get mad at me on that video what you do right now if you're watching the video and you feel frustrated instead of turning me off Google Babylonian prayer beat just start with that one. and then just let that lead you down the road you want to go to okay and, and what I'm trying to say is is this is that if you study the history you realize that it ain't the same thing. Dude, I, I bought a secular history lesson to learn about Asia Minor. And the guy, not even a Christian, he teaches at Tulane. He's a PhD in history. And he says, everybody knows that Catholicism is not the same as apostolic Christianity. Wow. He said, there's like 200 years that separate the two archaeologically, the finds that we have. They know that. The secular people know that. And they don't want to tell you that. He said it right there in his video. He ain't no no dog in the hunt. He's just telling you what he knows. All right? And so, but what I'm saying is I want you to, if you had notes, you could also Google this. You could Google arrayed in purple and scarlet. You could Google it. Show me a picture. You know what? Let's, let's just do this. Y'all just going to have to bear with me. If I, I'm not going to keep you too long. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to try to teach this whole thing tonight. How we do that? We just throttle this bad boy down. We take our time. And we just extract some whatever we can get out of. Sound okay? All right. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to Google. Let's see if it works. Uh, a picture of <coughs> Catholic priests and cardinals in the same room. Let's see. Images. See what we got. I probably took it off the internet since I first found it like three years ago. They're listening to you. Huh? <laughs> I said they're listening to you. Look it down right before. Yeah, right there. before I was going to do this. You can see the scarlet. Yeah, you can see the scarlet from the cardinals. There's the, okay. there's the cardinals, right? See the cardinals? You can see that, right? I mean, here's some purple. There you go. Okay. So you got it right there. They're raising purple and gold. But again, I want you to know, I don't think that the Catholic Church is this, is her. I think that the Catholic Church, church is part of her. All right? Okay. And um, now, but, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and dig a little bit deeper. <laughs> so she's not only in purple and scarlet. Well, well, you know what, though? Let's also look at this. Let's look at the Pope. Pope's hat. Well, let's see. We can find a Pope's hat right here. Not that hat. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, I think it's, well, it might be, I can't remember if it's Dagon or if it's Chemosh or whatever. But if you looked at it from the side, I guess I'm going to have to Google side view. Look, there you go. 
Look, yeah, the fish mouth. Sir Henry Layard, okay. Sir Henry Layard in the 18th century excavated areas of Babylon. And, what he, and I remember this from whenever I wrote my book and I was studying for it. And what he found was uh, the fish depictions of the fish god. And, and it's the same exact thing as this mitre right here. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, let's see. Sir Henry Layard's. Sir Henry Layard finds images of the fish god. Let's see what happens. Images kind of putting myself out here on the Okay, here we go. This is good enough. Can y'all see that one? Kind of, sort of? Not really, huh? All right. Oh, here we go. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is it a perfect representation? But come on, man. You, and there's even other pictures that even bring it out even more. So the point that I'm trying to make, the main point that I'm trying to make is <coughs> scarlet, purple, <coughs> look, gold, precious stones, pearls, look, a cup in her hand. A cup in her hand. Okay? Yeah. Full of... This is the point that I'm trying to make. They might, they might be tricky. And I'm just some little old chunky boy from South Louisiana. But you're going to tell me that if God's apostolic church was already in existence before Constantine had his vision in the sky in 300 AD. And, the, and these, these words were already written on the page. Revelation was written in AD 95. Constantine did not have his vision in the sky till AD 300. That means these words were already written on the papyrus and circulated in the churches. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say at the very least, the Catholic Church, which probably didn't even start dressing in purple and drinking out of gold goblets until later on, knew that this was written in here. Do we not have a problem? What, what, what are you, you going to do? Are you going to like dress your people up and put hats on them that look like this stuff? Knowingly doing it? Yeah, I think they do. Just like mystery religion does. and they don't Because they don't think that you and I are smart enough to catch on. They don't think you and I are smart enough to catch on. And much of the stuff that's going on behind... And I show the only reason I show all of this is not to cause trouble. But I'm just trying to do everything that I know to do to wake people up. Amen. To let people see. Dude, you're, we're in the midst of something like weird like the Truman Show. No, we're not, but that's what the Truman Show is. Jim Carrey found out that he was on a, he was raised on a movie set. So his world wasn't his reality. And he finds out one day. So what I'm saying is the only thing real to us is Jesus and his word. But we've been but we've been deceived and we've been fed a bunch of information. I think we should I think we should, you know, we'll finish with this Babylon right here. Just as Jesus is the head of the church and the church's plan is found in the truth of his word, the occultism, magic, and deception of Mystery Babylon is the head of the beast and it flows its purposes into its body. All those false mystery religions, all those offsprings of that harlot mother, and it flows through its body as it moves its plan forward. How does that look in the end? I don't know. I feel like part of it's shaping up before our very eyes. But we shall see. I know one thing we got that we can believe. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He's in control. Amen. He's given us his word. And if we'll take it step by step and ask the Holy Spirit to show us, he will prepare our hearts <clears throat> to be able to see what's going to happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are the head and that we are the body. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that you lead and guide your body in the right direction, that you have a desire, Lord God, for your will upon earth to come forth, 
You have a desire for people's souls to be saved. We just want to thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.